common gathering uh, yesterday and this morning, the hummingbirds were just going crazy over flowers and it's like, that would be fun to talk about. Hummingbirds really love tubular plants. So when you are looking to start a hummingbird garden, you want to look with, uh, uh, start um, looking for plants that have this tubular shape. Um, typically, hummingbirds love the reds and oranges, but I have found that those purple salvias that are like this red one over here, um, they love that one. Uh, so always look for that tube shape for those uh, hummingbirds. And you'll notice that pretty much everything that I have up here is the tubular shape. This is actually a hummingbird mint, um, also known as Agastache. Um, this is one that uh, they really, really love. This is also a deer resistant uh, plant. Uh, rabbits tend to stay away from it and javelina as well um, because it does smell minty. Um, it does have the hummingbird too. Um, comes in a variety of different colors, purples and pinks, oranges, yellows, um, but this is another plant that the hummingbirds just go crazy for. Um, the, there's a couple of different varieties of this. Uh, the kudos um, are more dwarf, so they're going to kind of stay in that two foot by two foot range. Uh, some of the other hummingbird mints can get in that four to five foot range. All my beautiful flowers died away. Um, so this is a uh, daylily. Um, this is one of the uh, Dioros, uh, which is an ever-blooming daylily. This one's purple. There is a Stella daylily that is yellow. Um, tubular flowers. This is a great plant for naturalizing uh, because it just kind of stays this nice green and it continues to bloom throughout the summer. This is actually an annual that I brought in for fall. Um, this is uh, called the Bonfire Mix, which I, I love the colors on this. And the hummingbirds have just been going crazy about this guy. Um, but it, I thought it was pretty because it just, it, it's fall to me. <laughs> the petunias will die. It is an annual, um, so you will enjoy it until our first frost. Um, they can take a little bit of a frost, but if we drop below 25, it, it's done. Yeah, yeah, they're annual. So basically the difference between a perennial and an annual, just remember P is for permanent. Um, permanent, perennial, and then annual is something you need to plant annually. The salvia that I was talking about that's over there, there's one that's purple and then this is the red one. Um, this is an annual as well, or I treat it as an annual. Um, this is kind of a new product for us. Um, on the tag, it does say it's a zone 7. Um, I just don't, I haven't seen it perform yet, so I don't know if it's going to come back or not. Um, but gorgeous flowers and these long, um, these long flowers, like I said, you can go back there right now and there's like two of them over there. Uh, great uh, plant for hummingbirds. This is another annual that I brought and, and I know we're getting close to being closer to fall where everything's gonna die. Um, but maybe for next year, keep this guy in mind. Uh, these orange flowers, this is a cupia, um, it's also called Vermillionaire. Um, the hummingbirds just love this orange, this bright orange color, so it's a great plant to have. This is a uh, honeysuckle. Um, there are several different types of honeysuckle that the hummingbirds love. Um, this is the uh, gold flame honeysuckle. Um, the flowers on this guy are spectacular. Um, nice bright colors. Again, the hummingbirds love it. 
the whole honeysuckle is more of that yellow, uh, light yellow orange color. Um, the nice thing about the hall honeysuckle is that he will keep his leaves, whereas this guy's going to lose them. So he will be just sticks in the winter time, whereas the hall honeysuckle will keep his leaves. Um, I kind of like to plant things together, so you get the pretty flowers of this one and you get the evergreen of the other one. So I just kind of mix them up when I do plantings and stuff. These are a couple of shady um, perennials that I brought up. Um, this is the Amber Glow Montebertia. Um, I, I learned these guys as Procosmias. Um, these are just spectacular. Uh, they are rhizome uh, plants, so they will uh, winter over and then they come up in the springtime. Um, but we have found that these guys like a little bit of afternoon shade. Um, so if you can provide that, they would be just fine. Um, with all bulbs, I like to put a little layer of mulch over them in the wintertime just to kind of protect that frost zone. Not that we ever get really, you know, we don't freeze into the ground too much, but I always like to protect them anyway. And this is a hosta. Uh, most of us are familiar with them. Um, we just don't have a lot of them around um, just because a lot of us don't have the shade that they require. Uh, but it's a great plant. Um, they do bloom uh, this uh, gorgeous stalk and most of them are really, really fragrant. Uh, light purple flowers on most of them. Some of them are white. Uh, and hostas are very versatile. They, have, they come in a lot of variety of different colors. Um, some of them are just green, some of them are blue-green, uh, some of them are more yellowish color, so if you, need it, if you have a dark spot that have, needs some brightening, the yellow ones kind of brighten up. Um, so very versatile as far as the varieties go. I did bring a few butterfly plants, um, just because we were talking about hummingbirds, butterflies kind of go with it. Um, this is a milkweed. Uh, this is the tropical variety of milkweed. There are tropical varieties which are annuals and the perennial variety which are usually the Cinderella's. Anything that says tuberosa, those are the perennial variety. Um, most of the time the, the butterflies will lay their eggs on the milkweed itself and then the caterpillars just kind of eat their way down. Um, when when they they come out of their egg shell. This is a little tiny butterfly bush. Um, I love butterfly bushes. They can fit into any landscape. Um, very deer and animal resistant. Um, variety of different colors. They come in white, pink, purple, dark purple. The magenta, uh, they actually come in yellow. It's very rare and it's really hard to find, but they do come in yellows that are spectacular. Um, I was at a house last year and, and she had one that was 12 foot tall. It was just absolutely gorgeous. It was in full bloom. Uh, and, and most butterfly bushes are, are really, really pretty when they're full blown, uh, in bloom. Uh, hummingbirds do like them. Um, they don't, the tube is not is super long, but they still can get nectar out of them. Um, hummingbirds actually have a fairly long tongue, um, which is why they can get into your feeders when it's almost empty. Um, their beak goes down and then their tongues kind of come out. Um, most hummingbirds I found, um, I was reading the other day, and they weigh less than a nickel. Um, so they're really, really light. The hydrangea, another shady, a shady plant. Um, the hummingbirds like this one a little bit, but I found that the butterflies like this one even more. Um, butterflies more or less look for landing pads, um, something where they can kind of just sit and relax and then they do their nectar. Uh, so anything with the landing pad, the butterflies will love. Um, hydrangeas do really well here. 
um, except that they do need that afternoon shade. So if they can get a little bit of morning sun, three or four hours, and then go into the shady spot, they do really well. Um, they do best planted in a pot because you can keep that soil a little bit more neutral. Neutral. Uh, they like um, a me medium pH or even a little bit lower than mid, mid ground. Uh, so we always recommend that after you plant, if they're going in the ground, you definitely want to add soil sulfur. Um, to keep them the right color. Um, so they do come in a variety of different colors. To keep them the color that they are, you want to add soil sulfur. If, if you do not, you'll end up with a pale a pale flower and it won't be as vibrant as, as the, the original flower. So this is my last shade plant. And this is uh, one that the butterflies and the hummingbirds are after. Um, this is lily turf. Um, Kind of a grassy looking um, plant that does really, really well in the shade. Um, really pretty flowers um, that are usually in that lilac color. Um, they, they can do a little bit of morning sun, three or four hours, um, but after that they need the shade. Basically, the real difference between here and other places is that well, nine months out of 12, we have no humidity, and that's the biggest difference. Um, so um, this is why everybody reads the tags and says, well, it says full sun. Well, we're not everywhere else. We're in Prescott, Arizona. So it's that lack of humidity in our dry winds that really make the difference here. This is one of my favorite plants, and I use it a lot um, because it's very sturdy. Um, and I'm sure everybody knows this plant. This is autumn sage. Um, we love it because the hummingbirds love it. Uh, very easy to grow. Um, it likes all different conditions. Um, it's one of the few things that I can get to grow in Dewey. Um, I live on top of a hill and I get the wind all the time. All the time. Um, and I have no wind break, so I have to tough. I, I plant tough plants just so I can make something survive. Uh, but hummingbirds love these guys. These guys come in a variety of different colors. Um, reds, pinks, purples, uh, oranges, uh, whites. So whatever your color is, they, yeah, the salmon ones are really, really pretty. Um, very versatile. Deer and rabbits hate this plant. Um, so it's one that you can put out there and nobody will mess with. butterfly plant. Um, they love this landing pad. Um, so they just land on it and then they start sucking. Um, this is actually another bird plant. Those little gold finches that we have we love to eat these. So I always tell people to deadhead throughout the summer um, because when you deadhead it keeps your flowers blooming on and on and on. Um, if you just let them kind of go to seed it's kind of telling the plant that, okay, it's time to go to sleep. So it goes to seed and, and it's just part of its survival instinct. Once it goes to seed, it won't produce as many flowers. So it's really, really important to deadhead. And then September, October, that's when you let it go to seed. And just let the birds eat this because you'll enjoy the show that they're gonna put on for you. Um, echinaceas come in a variety of different colors. Um, this one's called Delicious Candy. Um, this is one of the Cheyenne Spirits. And the Cheyenne Spirits are really cool because they come in a variety of different colors. And you never know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, these two are another butterfly attractor. Um, scabiosa or pincushion flower. Um, in the fall, the monarchs are all over these uh, when they're down in the lower house. So we always try to have them. 
And this is one plant that, um, like the autumn sage, blooms basically from April to November. Uh, keep deadheading it and it'll just continue to go on and on and on. Uh, yarrow, which most everybody is pretty familiar with, um, this is one of those very drought tolerant plants that can just kind of do its own thing. Um, but it has a nice landing path for the butterflies as well, and so they really like this guy. Uh, this is the moonshine, and he, he can get a fairly good size. Um, if you're looking for something that stays smaller, the Desert Eve varieties stay uh, a little bit smaller, and they have a little bit lacier leaves. Um, there's actually a Greek yarrow down there that's actually white, um, which is more of a brown cover. 